Hey guys, it's me, the Afro Hammerai, and this is kind of a TR6S video, but it's also a project video, mainly because I want to show off a really cool project that I managed to do with this and Ableton. So in my previous video where I talked about using the TR6S with your door, I talked about using it as a MIDI module. Um, and essentially I was like, hey, you know what would be cool if not only I could send notes to it, but also automate some of its stuff, because then that way I don't have to use motion on the TR6S and write in my pattern. I could do everything off of Ableton if I want to, and then just record it back into there and use it for audio and stuff like that. Now, what's great is because I have Live Suite, I also have Max for Live, and Max for Live, I kind of guessed would be able to do this, but I, I didn't really have an idea of what I was doing with it. So I kind of just jumped in a bit blind and tried to figure out what I could do. So the first thing I had to do was genuinely look through Roland's MIDI implementation chart. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this is just like about as confusing as the standard notes. I'm not even joking. It was just really odd. Um, I did have to basically just make a note to put all of these in. So then that way I could actually make the Max for Live device I needed. Um, but, but this was really, really, really annoying, basically. But after a lot of messing about in Max for Live and just a huge amount of trial and error, like it was a huge amount of trial and error for real. Um, I managed to actually make this, which is an instrument rack that's meant to work with the TR6S. So I'm going to walk you through it and I'm going to tell you how it works, uh, mainly because I'm very proud of it, basically. Yeah. So this is a drum rack. Um, now, I did a bit of a search and I found out that the only real way to get a drum rack to work would either be to have like lots of separate external instruments on each pad and then set it out to be the correct note or to do what I did here, which is having each pad have like an empty sample just because it needed to have something. You must probably wondering why I picked this approach instead of putting separate instrument racks. And I'll get back onto that when I talk about the Max for Live device. To answer the question of why I needed a drum rack in the first place, the most important thing for me with the TR6S is being able to really easily use it with the push, but also having it show up in my MIDI piano rolls. So that way I can just drag everything into where it needs to be. It overall just makes it a much easier thing to use and kind of starts to integrate the TR6S a lot more as if it was actually like a drum pad, but instead of samples, you're just controlling it. It, it makes sense when you're actually using it. In the instrument rack, I also set up this TR6S out chain. And basically this has the TR6S controller and also the external instrument. This isn't actually doing anything with audio because realistically, it's likely that what I'm going to do is still have this set up as an instrument rack to control the TR6S and then have separate audio tracks up here for each of the individual parts. This is, however, the only way for me to be able to send MIDI out to the TR6S and actually send any notes to it. So this is necessary. And over here, we have the big Max for Live device I've made called Afro Hammerize TR6S Controller. It's a very catchy name. I think it will catch on. I don't know where I can share it, but once I figured it out, I will share it. The Max for Live device was actually really hard to get working. Not that it didn't control the TR6S, it always controlled it, but I found that I was getting a huge amount of lag whenever I actually put automation on. Originally, I had the drum pad set up with each individual pad having an external instrument on it. The problem is that having that many external instruments sending MIDI all at once alongside all of my MIDI control changes just made everything lag up. So it would be kind of trying to process the control change alongside trying to process lots of different notes coming in at different times. And it just decided to not really like it. This is why I set it up in this sort of way instead. The downside is, is that using things like arpeggiators to do ratchet effects isn't really possible in this setup, at least not that I can see. The upside is that it means that I can actually automate everything with curved automation. There was a way that I managed to get to work using what was called an integer as opposed to float numbers, but it just looked really messy in Ableton when I wanted to automate. And it was something that I thought, well, for the sake of automation, it's just going to be really annoying. So this was the easiest way for me to do it. But with this setup, I now have a way to add automation in for all of my separate sounds and also send notes to the TR6S all in one. I'll give you a quick demo right now.
See, it works. It's working. Yeah. Other things that I would actually add on to this. Yeah, probably. I think I would make it so that I can modulate it as well as automate it so that I can do, you know, some really cool stuff like setting it at a certain tune, but then only temporarily changing the value. That would be pretty cool. Also, I would love to see how it is that I can make this work with lots of external instruments so that I can use things in the drum rack a bit more, as opposed to kind of having to do this backwards way of having the drum rack with an empty sample. So then that way you can see it on a push with one external instrument. It'd be great to be able to like program in ratchets or something like that just by using an ARP rather than having to go in and manually adjust each note. But overall for my users, I think that this is going to be really cool. I can't wait to see what I can do with this in my tracks. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to try and find a way to package this up so that I could put a download link for this in the description because I think it would be pretty useful for a lot of people. So, you know, um, if you're interested in it um, and I haven't put a link there yet, let me know if there's any ways that you guys know that I can share this out. The only things that you'll need is Max for Live for the control um, and that's about it. So if you have either Ableton Live Suite or if not, if you have Standard but you've added Max for Live or Max onto it, then you should be all good to go. I thought this would be quite a cool video just because I managed to actually get the TR6S to do something really amazing um, with Ableton, at least in my opinion. It's very likely that to a lot of people, this is going to seem a bit basic, but I don't really care. I'm very impressed with myself. I'm allowed to be impressed with myself. You're welcome.